Something like three years ago, I made a video about viruses inside our DNA. The idea that our genes contain a lot of viral DNA, which integrated with us throughout billions of years of evolution. And though we generally tend to think of viruses as pathogens or something that's dangerous or something that's deadly, in reality that's not entirely true. Actually, in most cases, that's almost entirely not true. The story here is a lot more complicated. Most viruses actually serve a really important purpose in a lot of different genetic functions inside complex cells. And over billions of years, they've become an integral and a very important part of a lot of different functions inside different cells. And though we've known for a very long time that approximately 8 to maybe even 10% of DNA is essentially different viral components, when it comes to understanding exactly what they do, that part of science is still in its infancy. And so, hello and folk person, this is Anton. Today we're going to discuss a few more studies in regards to viruses inside our DNA, with the main focus being evolution and development. Essentially viruses, quite a lot of different viruses, helped evolve us into who we are today, and actually even right now support our systems, making us who we are. And so let's discuss the main details from studies you can find in the description. And I guess let's start with one of the bigger studies, with one of the biggest discoveries. So first of all, we know that during the evolution of various organisms, even before we became humans, and before our ancestors became vertebrates, a lot of viruses continuously interacted, or I guess infected, a lot of different species out there, and very often integrated into their DNA. This is especially true of so-called retroviruses, such as HIV that you see right here. And by definition, a retrovirus is a type of virus that's able to insert a DNA copy into its host cell. And in most cases, when the cell gets infected, this viral DNA is then actually considered to be its own. Sometimes the viral DNA remains inside without being touched and can then actually become part of DNA going down generations and remaining inside without being touched. So in other words, some of these viruses can actually stay inside for generations and generations and thus become part of the genome of a certain organism. And we know that a lot of ancient viruses infected a lot of different vertebrates hundreds of millions of years ago because we see the signs of these viruses inside our DNA. And in the video you can find in the description, we've talked about how 8 to 10% of DNA in most vertebrates is actually viral in nature. But it wasn't until recently that the researchers realized how crucial some of these viral infections actually were. As always, you can find all of these studies in the description below. But one of the major discoveries is actually in regards to what's known as myelin. By itself, myelin is essentially a type of a fat or fatty material that usually surrounds nerve cells in order to insulate them, but also in order to increase the rate of electrical impulses. Here's a rough schematic showing us how a lot of neurons inside our bodies, or actually inside of most vertebrates, sort of look like. And this insulating layer is actually one of the reasons why eventually a lot of different vertebrates were able to evolve to become so big, were then able to evolve relatively large nervous systems, and eventually humongous brains, like the ones we have, and a few other animals. A lot of different animals were able to evolve a very efficient way to transfer nervous signals, or basically various electrical impulses. But turns out that in order to create myelin, a very specific gene sequence is required which resembles a lot of retroviruses. Or in other words, genetic code that's responsible for myelin seems to have come from an ancient retrovirus whose genes exist in various mammals, amphibians, fish, but not in vertebrates like for example octopuses. And one of the reasons a lot of different vertebrates were able to achieve gigantic sizes, like for example one of the reasons elephants can get so big, is really because myelin allowed various vertebrates to have very efficient electric signal communication, making body size no longer an issue. But surprisingly enough, all of this was only discovered recently, because previously we actually thought a lot of these genetic regions were so-called non-coding regions or junk DNA. But completely by accident, the researchers behind a recent study discovered a gene they now refer to as retromyelin. And in order to see if it actually is what it is, they even conducted experiments where in certain species they would knock this gene out to see what would happen. 
And so here they learn that this unusual gene, which seems to be viral in nature, is directly responsible for the existence of myelin. When it was removed genetically, the lab animals where it was removed were no longer able to produce myelin inside their nerve cells and thus had a very very slow nervous response. And so by knocking down this unusual gene, retromyelin, they confirmed its viral nature. And it very likely started approximately 360 million years ago during the so-called age of fishes. It's actually the same age when the jaws very likely evolved as well. And so quite a lot of species, mammals, birds, and even amphibians potentially have this gene, which dramatically improved electric signal communication inside complex bodies, thus allowing various species to react faster to, for example, predators, or vice versa, allowed various species to catch prey much faster. And that's because it increases signal strength without increasing the diameter of nerve cells, allowing neurons to be packed in a much smaller space. But it also provides protection and support. Likewise, it also allows for various animals to suddenly have much longer limbs. Because then basically all of these signals can carry even if you have a really really long body. But intriguingly, these viruses very likely did not affect invertebrates, such as for example octopuses and squid. And because of this, these animals evolved something a little bit different. Here instead of packing cells and surrounding them with myelin, various types of invertebrates ended up evolving extremely wide nerve cells, which are actually quite efficient at transferring signals, but the problem is that you cannot have as many of them in the same volume of space. And so technically, squid and octopuses would never really have as many neurons as vertebrates unless they have an enormous body. And that by itself becomes extremely inefficient in a lot of different ways. And naturally, our brains, our super complex, super advanced brains, are also a result of all of this as well. There is no way we would have 80 billion neurons and have efficient communication if it wasn't for myelin and if it wasn't for this viral infection. But even more intriguingly, when the researchers tried to analyze if this happened just once, basically spreading to other organisms from some kind of a single infection, or if this happened multiple times, they actually discovered that this infection very likely happened multiple times throughout millions of years. So this is something that affected many organisms, just not all of them, eventually causing some organisms to evolve complex brains and tremendously large bodies with very efficient electrical signals. Okay, so viruses clearly helped us evolve intelligence and large bodies. What else? Well, it turns out that quite a lot more. Turns out that even placenta, one of the most important features of being a mammal, is very likely a result of a viral pathogen as well. And this is possibly something that happened approximately 500 million years ago. And so here, genes from some kind of a retrovirus that very likely infected early organisms once again, resulted in a strange protein known as MERV-L gag, an unusual genetic sequence that results in a strange protein. A protein that actually helps manage the embryo development minutes and hours after fertilization. In other words, as soon as the embryo is created, at least one virus, but potentially a lot more, seems to create a bunch of proteins that start the process responsible for creating embryonic cells. With a lot of these viruses even controlling how various stem cells differentiate and how they then become very specific types of cells in various types of animals. But even more strangely, the highest levels of this viral gene that then creates this unusual protein was actually during the earliest phases of embryonic development, literally suggesting that these viruses seem to guide early development in pretty much most animals, especially animals using sexual reproduction. And this was actually captured in a lot of these pictures you see right here, with tiny viral particles visible in different colors. Which by itself is really mind-blowing. These ancient viruses that are basically inside our DNA and have been there for millions of years seem to be directly responsible for forming life even from the first seconds after fertilization. And naturally, because of this discovery, medical researchers already started to look at this in order to understand potential issues and potential problems with infertility or developmental issues in the first few days. And so this research doesn't just tell us that viruses are crucial, it can also lead to some medical breakthroughs. But if this wasn't enough, well, viruses actually don't stop there either. 
they also seem to support the embryo by basically suppressing the immune system in order to avoid embryo destruction. And that's because during the process of fertilization, half of the DNA is from a different organism, I guess the father. And so in order to prevent mother's body from destroying it, the immune system has to be somehow shut down. And it turns out that something happens inside placenta that once again involves a bunch of viruses. But here it does something really tricky. It basically pretends to be under a constant viral attack. Explored more in the study right here. And by doing this, it prevents the immune system from destroying the fetus. And it seems to do this by using this unusual genetic repeats known as ALU. A kind of a double-stranded DNA that seems to be once again viral in origin that literally causes the placenta to start an immune response. But because these are not real viruses but just viral leftovers, they don't really do anything. But because of this, placenta acts as if it's always infected, which actually ends up protecting the fetus during its development. And here just a little bit more anatomy to help you understand. Inside placenta, the outer layer is known as syncytio trophoblast, a very thin cover inside the uterus that forms a kind of a wall in order to protect the fetus and also serves as a kind of a border that both feeds the fetus and also protects it from mother's immune system. And turns out that the protein responsible for creating this unusual structure is known as syncytin. But this strange protein has very unusual DNA. Unusual in a sense that it seems to resemble HIV quite a lot. And so once again, this protein seems to have come from an ancient retrovirus extremely similar to HIV and other retroviruses. And so the fetal development seems to be entirely dependent on a lot of different ancient viruses inside our DNA. But those are just some of the recent discoveries from just the last few years and are definitely not the last discoveries and probably not even the most mind-blowing discoveries we're going to be making. As I mentioned before, 8 to 10% of DNA seems to be viral in origin and none of it seems to be junk. It all very likely has function. But it will take a while to find out what function. And so definitely subscribe if you'd like to learn more about future discoveries in regards to this somewhat intriguing topic. But it looks like in the last couple of years, we've discovered that everything from early development to the development of large brains and large bodies all seems to be a result of ancient viral infections, mostly by these retroviruses. Something that we didn't know about up until relatively recently. But if you'd like to learn more about how viruses affect us or why they're important in a lot of other species, check out some of the previous videos in the description. But anyway, once we learn something else, I'll come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.